Alrighty, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and welcome everybody to a little bit more Zelda Links of the Past Randomizer. This is my 10th qualifier release for the Open Plus mode for the ladder. So, what this means is that I don't technically have to play any more if I don't want to. Also, 3, 2, 1, and go. Oh, that was a weird lag in Discord for a second there. But the timer begins, uh, begins uh, in Discord, basically. Also, we have bombs, kind of again, like last time. But I don't need to worry about pulling the tree or anything like that, so we're not gonna worry about that for now. Especially since killing an enemy here to pull the tree actually is a bit awkward. Alrighty, did I switch scenes? Okay, at least I do that. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Yesterday I just forgot. Good job, Rain. Either way, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. So, um, I would like to try and kill that guard. Maybe he drops something. He drops a heart. That is interesting in its own right. Because now we know he does either have bombs very late in the drop cycle, or no bombs at all. Also, we get a sword to begin. That actually is going to help just make the entire thing a little bit simpler. We have killed one enemy so far. I'm actually gonna just go for slightly more while I'm at it. Right, this should be four enemies and I have gotten hit, which means we get the tree pull that is almost going to be always present. Let's also see what we get from the bushcraft. It is arrows. I do not care for right now more arrows, and now I just need to kill one enemy in order to get the... Uh, other triple, so to speak. So if you kill three or less enemies, you get the tier one triple in the vanilla game, that is green rupees. And yes, it does actually, I'm pretty sure, persist through save and quit. Oh, actually, I already killed three enemies now. But I don't want to kill any more. Or now. Either way, if I pull on another tree... Like now, for example. This is now tier one, which actually is vanilla. It is single rupees. Um, if you kill four or more enemies and did not get hit, that is 20 rupees in the vanilla game. Randomized in the randomizer, as you might expect. Also, there's a moon pearl here. As well as 5 rupees if you have killed 4 or more enemies, which is the case most of the time, and have gotten hit at some point. Again, that is in fact the case most of the time. You probably did kill more than 4 enemies because... Well, it's just kind of the nature of the game, if you will. And most likely you also... ...have gotten hit in the meantime as well, because... Even if you're experienced in this game, certain things will just really hit you. Unless you really try to not get hit, I guess. Which often is slower than just damage boosting as well. There's a Bombos medallion. And an armor upgrade. Alright. Armor upgrade is not what we would be seeing in the race that happens right after if I am quick oh, come on, dash. If I'm quick enough to participate in that, but we'll see about that. I think there was nothing on the lumberjack ledge, I just forgot to mark it up. Alrighty, now. We only need 50 rupees total in order to be able to buy bombs. Although, now that we have gotten three separate bomb drops, I am actually not gonna worry about that anymore. There's a Kinnaburna and a Hammer. But we're not gonna go hammerless this seed for as long as we did last time. Sorry, spoilers for the previous seed. There's a bolt. That is nice to find early on. Also, it reminds me. Ooh, alright. Alright, we have two pendants in the light world, which already makes it more likely that this is going to take a while. 
Also, um, while the bomb wall is opening, for some reason you can throw a chicken through the wall. I'm sorry, chicken. I just felt like showing that off once. Normally I don't do this because if you pick up the chicken at the wrong time, you can softlock the game. So that's that. By the way, we could technically clear Eastern Palace with the bow we got and that didn't mark yet. There we go. But it's a pendant, so I don't care about clearing it. In fact, I would prefer not going there at all at this point. But at some point I might. So I kind of briefly forgot that I did not have real boots. I only have Zuda boots, which means I cannot um, get stuff off of the thing over there. Alrighty. No, we just kind of do a standard route. Go to the south, get to the dam. Which, one thing I will actually say. When I was watching these races before I started really playing myself, I almost felt like, you know, this early game always feels very similar. But at the same time, it does have a decent amount of variety. Plus, if you haven't, like, warmed up yourself in a bit, it actually can be quite nice to just get that time to warm up to not have particularly high stakes because the early game is very similar usually in some capacity. And just kind of get your hands warm, get your head in the game and actually get playing properly. But yeah, I would guess this is prob- <laughs> nice chicken clip, thank you. That's probably how you create wall chicken. I'm actually gonna grab these 20, just in case we get over to Palace of Darkness sooner or later. Yeah, standard seats do have that very built in, which I'm actually not a fan of standard whatsoever, because at least in open you can have variety, you can choose to uh, switch it up a little bit, and I actually prefer that. Also, I'm pretty sure using Bombos is faster than me using anything else. Also, the mini Moldorm apparently dropped bombs in this scenario. And get another sword. Come on. Alright. So the money bag enemies do drop bombs. For example, the rats will drop bombs at that point. Um, what else? Are snake snakes are money bags in Zelda 1. I think they have the same drop table as guards in Zelda 3 here. I just cost, uh, call enemies that drop in the vanilla game money bags because that kinda makes sense. Alright, and here we get nothing. Overall we get very little in this seat. Do I go Eastern Palace? I think I'm actually gonna go to escape first, because again, I do have a bowl. Let's say I find a fire rod or a lamp, I will feel compelled to just finish that dungeon too. So, yeah. Not the prettiest. Let's see, front of escape. Effectively, we need to find a small key here in this first chest. That is the only chest that is currently logically accessible that could still have the small key. The other chest that is always logically accessible at the beginning is the one in Sanctuary, because Hyrule Castle and the Sanctuary are effectively the same dungeon, just a really long one. So unless this chest here in particular would have been a small key. These chests down here that I'm visiting right now are actually not in logic. Until you find the small key in some capacity, which could be in the sewers, which means you would need a fire rod or a lamp. Or alternatively, you might need uh, the glove in order to get to the back of escape and get the key there. So, um, there's gonna be. Oh, I need that. There's going to be a case to make that maybe I should not have warp to the uh, Dark Cross. It could just be a small key that leads me to the back, which would actually allow us to fully clear Dark Cross. But simultaneously, that is not necessarily how it works. And speaking of not necessarily how it works. Oh. 
Oh, I did not want to kill that guy. Oh well, we just got a health refill from the sanctuary card. And there's the map, so at the very least, there's going to be at least an item in the escape sequence. And, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that. I forgot I had the uh, armor equipped here. Do these guys the guys respawn? I don't. I don't have enough bombs for this either. Oh, this is horrible. This is a disaster. I should have just saved and quit at that point. That green guard just walking the wrong way is really bad. Oh my god, is this more? How much more is there? There's one. Holy moly. Really? That was not worth it. I think saving quit would have been faster at this point. Hey, Bonsai Bear, welcome. You've give, been gifted a lot of rabbi demons. Rabbi. <laughs> nice. Those are pretty cute. Slip. Nickarchen. That sounds kind of neat. What kind of channel is that, if I may ask? They have rabbites, they must be trustworthy, right? That's how it works. Although, maybe a rabbi. Are rabbits trustworthy? Either way, rats are money bags in this game, so if I want bombs, I can kill some rats. <laughs> That's a lot of rabbits, holy cow. Alright, there's the chest. Okay, we did the bombs, but... Ah! Alrighty, so the back of escape will have a small key in it. He's a German streamer? Nice. So it's not Rabbi, it's, it's Pogapushel. <laughs> the way it should be. Because Pogapushel is so much of a better name, I feel. Remember, we do not have actual proper boots, but we can not just bonk this wall open. There is a lamp! So, me checking out the Dark Cross was in fact in logic, and another thing that is in logic is, well, a dungeon I didn't want to visit because it's a pendant just to the right over here. You wish we could spin speed that smoothly with the sword? After I failed it earlier. <laughs> yeah. It's all a matter of practice and controller, really. In this case, this controller has slightly different button like behavior, so I'm still struggling with getting it consistently. Alrighty, what do I expect to find? I probably expect to find a glove, which opens up the dark world, which means we would immediately go and try and clear Palace of Darkness after a hype cave visit into the pyramid. So... If I find the glove right here, do I even quit? Probably not. Hmm. One item from here. You tried to get her to play Secret of Mana Randomizer? Oof. Well, good luck. It's definitely quite fun, in my opinion. I should have used the bow. Bow is faster for clearing that room. There's the big key. We could just go to the boss. But we have the lamp as well, which means the lamp indicates that the chest on the other side is just as much in logic. And could contain the last item. Or the boss could contain the last item. I don't know. I mean, there's literally only three items remaining in the world that I could technically access. One is Agina, one is the bottle kit, and one is in here. 
So I do not think it's a wise choice to try and gamble on the item being on the boss in this case. Xbox analog stick, the D-pad is just bad. Yeah, the Xbox controller D-pad are horrible. And again, I don't really like the one... Okay, it's not here. I don't really like the one from... The... Switch Pro Controller much more either. Like, it's not terrible, I guess. But I keep thinking of the PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 controller D-pads, and I like those a lot more. Then again, I will prefer the Xbox D-pad over an analog stick for a game like this. I do not know how to play with an analog stick. If I don't feel the need to do, like, smooth motions, there's silver arrows there. Considering that either Desert or Misery Mire is guaranteed to be a crystal, if not both. We probably will get those at some point. Fire Rod? What? That is no progression right there. It has to be over here. This is interesting. Give me a second. Okay. You gotta grab some rumps. Well, hope you enjoy your rumps. Okay, so I guess whatever item we're looking for has to be on sick hit then. But fire rod is still nice. Could trip up somebody if they decide to check bottle before Agina. Although I feel like that's kind of unusual. Oh my goodness, I forgot Aghanim. I forgot Aghanim is an option. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Uh, I don't have enough bombs to do fake flipper twice, so let's go Aghanim. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I wanted a quick quick seed game. I could participate in the other race. I forgot. I entirely did not remember that Aghanim was a possibility whatsoever. Which is why I went to all these locations. Then again, it did pay off for going to Agena for the fire rod. So it's not all bad. In fact, Two things. One, it's not terribly unlikely that a potential opponent will decide to also check out everything before... Uh, ...will also check out everything before going to Aghanim's tower, because, you know, you lose a lot of time if you did Aghanim and didn't have to do it. Oh wow, actually my gathering of rupees for Palace of Darkness comes in more handy more quickly than I expected. Because that's gonna be entirely logic even for the glove. The op door doesn't open until the gas projector disappears. <laughs> Completely forgot about Agadem. How you forget about something like that? Alright, if Pulse of Darkness is the last pendant, we go Hype Cave first, but other than that, every other time we go Pulse of Darkness first. I mean, I guess the sword is also nice from Bottle Kit, but we would get that at some point while visiting the Village of Outcast, almost certainly. 
So, slight, well, kind of a slow start. Not the worst, but I did basically triple dip Hyrule Castle because Aghanim was just not on my mind. The main reason why it wasn't on my mind is because we didn't have a hookshot, by the way, which would give us access to the remainder of the Dark World. But with a hammer, we do actually have access to Hype Cave, Stumpy, and Digging Game, which is a decent amount of checks to. Rocks are enemies, you just saw it in Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I mean, that's a different universe, right? I don't think that's the universe we are living in here. Oh, I forgot this was the last one. I did not count whatsoever. That's okay. Not like it matters. Alright, we actually did our magic refill too here, which is nice. Couldn't use the fire rod. Alright, so Palace of Darkness is the other 5 6 crystal. Kinda want these bombs, but there's plenty of bombs inside Palace of Darkness, so I'm not gonna worry about this. Immediately clear Palace of Darkness, it is a crystal that we want to clear sooner rather than later even, thanks to that, so might as well just do it right now. Frogs are never helpful. I mean... Frogs are exactly as helpful as cats. They can be your companion animal. You can cuddle them and stuff like that, although maybe they don't like it. Plus, I don't think something needs to be helpful in order to be allowed to be a friend, right? <laughs> they help fill your stomach? I mean, they can go and bring you some herbs, I guess. You're slightly better at selecting appropriate things for you to eat than cats are. Cats usually bring you birds or leaves and stuff like that, which is cute, I guess. need more bombs because we need to open up the mimic room as well without having proper boots. There's Warford's glove. Right. Means we now have proper access to the dark world. Not full access yet, but proper. <laughs> I can't believe it just straight up forgot about Agonim. <laughs> But again, the fire rod could end up... Oh, shoot. I don't think it's... The fire rod could end up being helpful. You need to... Ah, oh, that was... Oh, <laughs> no, that was so unnecessary. That was both uh, front row items, which means the items on the right side are always going to be two small keys. And the chest I tried to get to is always guaranteed a small key. Ah, oh, that was silly. This is a small key, and this is a small key. Can you hit the... No, you cannot. I was wondering whether you could hit the crystal switch from over here. Apparently not. I think I picked up more bombs. the big key yet, so bomb jump is out of the question. Mm. 
do want to actually gather a bunch of money down here. Because we need a bunch for various purposes. Also Zora is not logic too, technically. There's a compass. And a big key. So the chests just south of the total room upstairs. Or guaranteed contains a small key, because otherwise you could soft lock yourself. If the small key could be anywhere else at this point. Does not always contain a small key. But in this case it does, because I only have two small keys for that purpose. If I have three at that point, checking all these chests, it would be possible for it to have something else. Actually, I think it would be guaranteed, considering the checks I've done at this point. There's proper boots here, and I just realized I do not have a way to... Oh, and Titan's bits here too. I don't have an efficient way to death warp. I should not have killed that guy. I completely forgot about needing to death warp in order to get back to the entrance. Hey Maverick, welcome! How are you doing today? So what do we need? We need basically everything. We need an ice rod, hookshot, mirror, flippers, king of Samaria. All of these things. This test on the left guaranteed also a small key. So what do we do after Palace of Darkness? We are going to go ahead and... Just roll up the Dark World from the north, I guess? I could go Hype Key first, but considering how many items we are still lacking... It's unlikely the Hype Key is going to contribute that much to it. It's fine so far, that's nice. We're doing fine. My sleep schedule is still messed up, and tomorrow, which today's Friday by the way, tomorrow I really have to be awake. Eight hours from now, because that's when my stream starts, or my Euros mount. And I wanted to play that game for quite a while. I do wonder whether it holds up as well as it does in my memory. These enemies are also part of the money, money back crew. <laughs> Boxing pot, boots and bits and boots and bits and boots and bits. I mean, that's why I'm trying to correct my sleep schedule cell phone. Alright, we... Got everything out of this dungeon here. Guaranteed. Do I go hype key first? <sighs> we could just roll up the dark wall from the bottom, and then go all the way to north, path after Pascal Woods. Considering how many more items we still need, maybe that's a reasonable choice. The downside... no, actually no. The biggest downside to doing that would be, of course, that I do not have a way to deliver the frog efficiently at that point. We don't do that. Not for now. Yeah, I mean, I still remember Bonza Beer, that's what I promised. When it's complete, but it's also been... Well, in development since such a long time. Which, I have to admit that it did not follow its development, it might be... 
is kind of getting a lot of content and stuff like that. Also, I forgot to back up the scoop. Didn't do that yet. Either way, it's complete. I did promise it. Do you remember? Is there a lot of arcade mode? What do you think they work on the story mode? What's arcade mode? One of those yeah, games. I think I missed what that was about. You know, I should have gone to the front first. more just like a gauntlet. Oh no. Am I early? Yeah. At least I wasn't up before midnight. This time around. So technically sleep schedule is getting into the correct place now. It's not that great really. Maybe I should have gone to the boss first, hope for a mirror. Or something. Here we get a mirror here. Nope, no mirrors. sufficient amount of hearts. Not great, but everything only does one heart of damage. So we're fine. I guess I can still, could still pick it up here. Well, I wanted a key. Because I need a key for the front door. No good still. No items so far. Oof. I think that's two. Three. One more. Count apparently. Come on, buddy. This is difficult to access right there. There we go, thank you. Oof. All the items are in the front. Can't sleep because of green tea. Interesting. I hope at least that the green tea was tasty. So unfortunately, the fire rod that I found early-ish does not help me in any capacity right now. We get Titan, or uh, a hookshot, or a mirror. We can go up the mountain as well. small key, so we go left hand side first. Because we are almost guaranteed, I think, to get a small, oh, the small key along the way here, since I checked everything else. There's the first item. There's a small key, which allows us to wrap around. We don't have a hookshot or anything else, really, to make this room slightly more efficient. I wonder whether that was faster than just going around the right hand side to exit the door. Maybe, maybe not. It was just force of habit at this point. And there's the second item. Nothing useful, but that's okay. Now we go Village of Outcast, clear Thieves' Turn. 
basically the sea is just routing itself really for the most part. I could have decided to wrap the Dark World up from the south because Hype Cave is always an early check that I think is almost always worthwhile. But the problem of course in this case is that we didn't really get an opportunity to go there efficiently at this point. Which is usually my entry point into the Dark World, but not this seed, I guess. Welcome to you, your boy. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the good luck, I definitely need it. I went the wrong way around. I need to reset my capture. I think the sound is slightly behind. There we go. Meow, meow, meow. Bingo bomb. Drinking green tea late and coffee, isn't it? Mm. I actually still don't know whether coffee makes me sleepy or whether it prevents me from sleeping. It feels like it's both at times, depending on situation. Also, I only lost a lot of health here. I could try to capture a fairy, but I may want to death warp. Or we could just get... ah, I was about to say heart refill from the heart pieces, but I guess we need one more. I know, I know we had at least three at this point since last time we got the heart piece heart, but... I wasn't sure whether there might have been one more. So this is gonna cause a tremendous amount of lag if I have to use a kind of burner, but I will if desirable. Oh, 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 oh nice. Gonna play it safe. Activate this thing from above. So these also drop bombs, I think, because they are in the money back category, or are they in the god price back category? Not oh, money back, but there's a mirror. Um. That was not accessible until we had gloves. So this is sphere 3. Samaria, we would be able to most likely enter Total Rock if we find that. Now with the mirror, I am happy to announce that I'm gonna catch the next fairy I see. Could you stop? Oh my goodness. That's why I originally always killed that guy, but at some point I stopped killing him. Because it's kind of rare for him to do that, where he just keeps shooting and coming up. Sometimes he do still. Ah! Oh my goodness! Wow! Holy hell! I have never gotten combat like that from this guy before. <laughs> That's not good. It's still fine, but it's not good. <laughs> the 
thing I didn't go from south because now the rest is going to be more efficient, although I kind of would like to go to the I suppose. Yes, didn't even need that one heart. This would have been a sword, but because we only get three maximum, was we still had Kingdom Burner, so if I get hit, hit by anything once, I would have just activated it. But it was not necessary. That one bush has a 50-50 chance to have a bomb under it. And I mostly just open it by habit at this point. I should just optimize opening up that uh, track instead. The rest of play. You need to do digging game before you pick up a froggy because you cannot do digging game with a follower for some reason. Don't know why, it's just how it is. Part of the game's rules. No, we can actually go all the way around and land that catfish in the end. I do take a second bottle, thank you very much. No, I really want a fairy. There are fairy trees somewhere. struggled so much at, at that boss when you were a kid. I'm blind. I believe it. I always made sure to have at least three fairies with me when I played this as a kid. And I'm still pretty sure I never think I beat. Is that a shot? That's nice. I'm still pretty sure I never actually beat Ganon myself. I remember getting to Ganon, but I don't think I've ever beat it. So, normally when you press the A button, you leave your chest follower behind. But if you use a hookshot, and then dash before the chest catches up, just in time, you can actually... ...dash while the chest is still following you. Here I have to leave the chest behind in order to enter. You literally can't enter with the chest. I should have picked up these 50 rupees, actually. A little concerned about Zora, so I'm gonna actually pick it up. Find flippers where you can just do other stuff. Also, in case you're wondering, I'm just gonna leave the chest behind there. The game still knows that the chest is my most recent follower, and until I go and meter into the light world and lose my invulnerability frame specifically in the light world, this game still thinks that. Oh, that wasn't fair. That I have a chest as a follower. So, you know clearly I didn't have the chest with me. This guy's a psychic, managed to both open the chest and give me the contents of it from a distance. He never actually needed to bring the purple chest to him, he's just that good. At least that's my interpretation of it. See what would have happened if I went to Hype Cave first. With the mirror, but I've gone north side. Nothing! 
There was nothing. I mean, I have a mirror. Let's see if I can quit in the dark world. I'm gonna be on a pyramid. Why am I even going to catfish right now? I could have just gone up that mountain instead. Oh well, too late. We're going. I guess I'm just doing everything before going up that mountain. So, uh, this is a little bit awkward. But I guess I do not want to orphan the graveyard ledge. I do not know how the bee is even attacked, by the way. So the downside of checking the graveyard ledge right now is that I kind of meant to check it alongside dropping into the hole. But I'm not doing that now. Because I want to go catfish, I guess. Do I want to go catfish? Not really, I suppose. But it's also going to include Sora and uh, Waterfall Cave. Oh! Right, hang on. I don't have flippers. So... I need to do a fake flipper setup here. Well, I say setup, but that was not a setup, I just winged it. I completely forgot how my setup even works at this point. But, it, well, it did work, so... Fine, I guess. Let's see... Flute? Flute would be interesting here, then I didn't have to climb that mountain the manual way. What else could we find here? Maybe flippers right here, which would kind of make things a little bit simpler. So what we're gonna do is one, two, three, and then we put down two bombs, and we cannot swim. How can I reset right now? Um, three lamps, and then six arrows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we wait until these arrows to appear. One, two, three. Then we go for the bombs. And now it works. No, we are fake flippering because we just uh, despawned the uh, flipper thingies, uh, the splash, so to speak, and when you walk out of the waterfall with a moon pearl, it actually allows you to swim. Ooh, finding an ice rod right there. Behind flippers, that's amazing. Also, that's a, perp a blue potion. That's really nice too. I don't have enough money for Zora. But we could get the grave pad uh, ledge over here. Are we gonna save and quit here? Okay, now I just need a king of Samaria. Do I go to the back of escape first? It's literally two chests or checks reasonably quickly. Sure, let's do it. I kinda wanted to do that earlier anyways. Oh, wait, I can pick that the heavy box. We also don't have to use bombs because we do have the appropriate thingy magix. Let me save and quit. There's also a small key. Ooh, there's a flute. And powder. We we'll check powder immediately. I don't know. Oh, I needed to mirror. I forgot. So this was after finding the gloves. It's actually the same sphere as Mirror and Hookshot. Two items at this point. Um... Should I check powder right now? Technically, there's not going to be any better opportunity to check powder than right now. But also, there's so many checks that we can check really quickly. And I don't want to do it. Plus, information about both the Rock Medallion and Mr. Meyer Medallion is going to go be pretty um, are going to be pretty important here. So, I'm going to kind of sort of skip on that. And we can get silver arrows too. While they're going here. I still don't have. 
Okay, we do have the appropriate medallion for Misery Meyer, so we could dip in there, but... I'm gonna go up that mountain before that, since there's so many items there. Alright, we got silver arrows, which is nice. As we saw these earlier. Will help quite a bit for a few bosses coming up. We can also fully clear Desert Palace, which is a crystal that we want to clear anyways. And then we just flew up that mountain and start clearing everything there. There's the big key, so boots were required. Means that is also sphere 3, actually at the same time as the other stuff. That one. Here it is. Item? Oops, small key. This was an item I would have immediately mirrored and went to the boss. Because then the second item could just be in the boss if I'm lucky and I never have to check out the right side. But in this case, we get a small key in the chest. It's not one of the items. What's the stun drop? Hearts. I like hearts as a stun drop. Not overwhelming, but it's occasionally useful. Especially if I feel like I need a bit of health refill. We always go and defeat the boss at this point, there's no reason not to. And it is a 5-6 crystal. And it actually does have an item, even if it didn't have an item I would go there. Not gonna be any faster any later. This is item number one, and this is gonna be item number two eventually. Yes. No thanks to you, though. <laughs> Wait. I don't need to worry about magic, so we just do the efficient way. We dash all the way to the top. This is something that is still not in my muscle memory, where I want to always light both torches in the same... like, just... Saving magic, but we don't actually need to worry about that. Nice. Single cycle. And we actually finally get money. We did not need to go back into the K45 for the 50. That's alright. Not really much of a way to know that. So we check check Brock Cave and then we flew up the mountain. And then checking that. Importantly, we need to know whether your turtle rock is Aether Medallion or not. And how do I do that not? I think I go right hand side first in there. I don't do my usual go up and drop down type of deal because we can do that after. Piece of heart, not what we need. I'm very tempted to to Pyramid Fairy before even going up Death Mountain. But I do need to know. If I find Kina Samaria and Flipper somewhere, I need to know whether I need the Aether Medallion still. So that has the highest priority right now. How do we sequence it? Go up through Paradox Cave. Probably just go down through mostly Dark World. Piece of heart and a save point acquired. Oh my god, the cabbages. The cabbages! They are so mean sometimes. Actually, in fact, they are mean more often than not.
normally would want to hammer dash through these pots, but I want actually both parts in this case. So, we don't have a good way to activate the switch. Aside from bow. Bow is our best of There's more money if we need it. We do have a blue potion. Keep that in mind, Jagger. The door opened just at the wrong time and ate my inputs. Oh, there's all the money right here. Definitely did not need that 50. Alright, we did Paradox Cave. Do we go Spiral Cave and then up in the Dark World, or how do we do this? I think I want to jump down Spiral Cave after doing the Dark. with a damage boost. Threw the rock slightly earlier than usual. Let's see what we get. And it is... Ether. Okay, good to know. Less than ideal, but good to know. We do need the Ether Medallion. So we have one additional job. So, if I go... Spiral Cave. I'll have to climb back up. Do we just save and quit from Spiral Cave? Or flute, I guess, afterwards to go left side? Let's faster left side or... I think we flute from there. Yeah, I think looting is the way to go. Oh, well, there's all the three on this right here. Holy cow. No money to have worries at all at this point anymore. Yeah, Spiral Cave right now, then we get out of Spiral Cave after. And I can catch a fairy. Right here. We've got to do this the first time through here. Up. Yep. Alright. There's a mushroom. I don't need to buy potions, but I guess it's nice to have. I'm gonna have to check the mushroom briefly before we're going up to Tower of Hera. So I'm just gonna full clear Tower of Hera at this point. Because there's not really many locations remaining. I would say, aside from potentially maybe mushroom, Death Mountain was a complete bust. Oh, except that information and having the ether medallion now. Good. That is actually something very important to have. Very nice. Um, when do I hop into Misery Mire? I think Pyramid Fair, uh, Spike Cave after Tower of Hera, deliver the green pendant. Uh, yeah, we just do it before Zora at this point. Just not gonna be much faster than any other potential opponent. Just as you say, Death Mountain was a bust. Yeah, in terms of items, but at the same time, it could still could be interpreted that way. Because, you know, you would have found Ether Medallion pretty quick soon after, right? Is that an item or was that a. Okay, there was must, must have been an item in one of these chests that I just didn't register remembering. Because it wasn't a map or a compass and there's no small keys in this dungeon. And we did get the big key. Okay, there... <laughs> there are small keys in this dungeon. We just didn't have one as well. <laughs> uh, Right.
one hour until the other race would start. Let's see if we have enough time for that, because I also need to set up a 10 minute delay. We'll see. Spike cave it is now. Spike cave, if we save and quit. Oh, we're gonna land on the pyramid. Oh well. That's fine. I suppose. I mean it's not really I'm pretty sure it's still faster to save and quit from Spike Cave than ever running outside. It might make the march a lot slimmer. If you need to mirror off the pyramid afterwards. But I'm still pretty convinced that this is not the case. Like, in regular mode, that is not entrance randomizer, there's pretty much never a reason to ever run out of spike here. It's just never faster. One seven seven six. I do not know what that means. Oh wait, my money's. Oh yeah, one seven nine six. A lot of money, especially since the vanilla game caps at nine hundred ninety nine. Okay, mushroom, mushroom. Now oh, mushroom. Butcher, 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 butcher. Not what we need. And I didn't switch to flute for some reason. Now we deliver the green pendant. Is pedestal and logic? No, we need flippers for pedestal and logic. So we're not gonna worry about that anytime soon. Here. All right. Aside from Ether Medallion, Death Mountain was absolutely nothing. Come in, Death Mountain before uh, Misery Mire area. I would have immediately hopped into Misery Mire. I always say that Misery Mire. It's not usually that big of a time loss if you just go into it. If you need to double dip, it's fine. But in this case, there were so many other locations that were just significantly quicker that I fight against it. So, if you do a thing here where you just leave the bomb as soon as there is, and you can just keep walking, you can actually get to screen transition exactly when the bomb explodes, and this allows you to... Duplicate the bomb. So basically, if you do a screen transition or a mirror transition, uh, basically as soon as the bomb explodes, you somehow, don't ask me how because I don't know the mechanics, um, retain your follower bomb. You just get it back. It's weird. The boomerang and the bomb. Not what we need. The good boomerang though. Mr. Meyer. Or we could go check that powder already. We got. A little while ago. Still need a bunch of items. You know what? There's only two items in Misery Mire. It's unlikely that both of them that we need are still in there. So, sure. One thing I will not go for, I guess, is Sora for now. Potion. 
If we find flippers first, we immediately go and clear Swamp Palace. Do we go to the back first? I think we do actually for once. Because there's really not a whole lot else left at this point. Technically a zero cycle, but not much slower, faster than a quick one cycle. We have a fairy, so we can just continue playing as normal. I would prefer not using it, but have a choice. There's the flippers. We could immediately decide to hop out of here, but we always need the big key to this dungeon anyways. So we might as well just continue looking for that one. And we might be able to find the King of Samari as well. Who knows. You go back there a little bit to avoid that fireball. Oopsie. Speaking of fire, I don't have enough for magics. Oh, shoot! <laughs> uh... What? Wait, what? What? Hang on, what did I take damage from? Oh, there was a lizard over here. I did not even see you, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> I did not see that guy. At all. I was so focused on something else here. Alright, flippers were after the flute. <laughs> that was kinda of funny though. So we did do this. Also Hobo is now on logic. And there's the second item. We still need to find the big key, so we just continue until we get that. No fairy, yeah. We do have a fairy. Or if we had a fairy. Now we don't have a fairy anymore. It's a shame, because I like having fairies. We don't have enough small keys to open up that door over there. We go. Wait. Wait, I'm a dingus. I'm committed now, but still a dingus. That has to be the big key, because literally there's no other place where the big key can be. Uh, well, I guess I... no. Yeah, no, I think the north route would have been faster. Either way, doesn't matter now. I got the big key. Yeah, the north route would definitely be faster. Immediately is one palace. Find Hino Samari along the way and we good, right? That's how it works. But sometimes it's how it works. One thing I will say been only like two ice rod hunts in these bunch of seeds. So even though I haven't always gotten particularly lucky. Which you know, on average I've still gotten lucky, I guess. It worked out decently well. Oh, I don't have a shield. <laughs> Normally you can just walk into this uh, projectile because you have a small shield. The fighter shield helps in this one very specific situation. Do we go... No. I don't go Ice Palace before Hobo. I will probably even check Zora before Ice Palace. Eh, maybe that's a stretch. 
Oh, we could be pedestal at this point. <laughs> oh no. Thankfully, you don't need magic in this dungeon. In fact, we will get a magic refilled after defeating the boss, I guess. Oops, I meant to loop shot. Hit it number one. The hammer I want here. Technically, this is slightly more efficient if you don't mess up with the inputs. Alrighty, uh, we do have plenty of bombs for dive announce, so that would not be a problem. But at the same time, we're gonna go to the back of this dungeon before the front, because there's not a whole lot of things left outside of this dungeon at this point that we could go to. Like, sure, Ice Palace. But the probability is decent that we will find the remaining item in the back of Swamp. Or that one chest that we still get in the front here. Who knows? Worst case scenario, we just come back in and check the left side smoke because I will not leave any items behind, not even a single one. There's the map, that means at least one item is left side swamp. Starting to regret my decision to go straight through the back, but we'll do it. back in anyways. I'm not gonna go back for the big key now. Item. Oh, there's at least two items remaining in this dungeon that I have to get in order to have when going back inside. Oh yeah, Ice Rod was actually only available after Flippers as well, now that I think about it. This doubles Waterfall Fairy and that did a minor sequence break. Pretty common sequence break, but it's still not in logic. Alright. There's three items still in there. Well, we definitely go back now. Okay, what's our ammo after this? Run over to Hobo, I guess? Might be faster to run from this dungeon, actually. Just kind of hope it's not Zora, because a potential opponent might have done the same thing with Catfish into Zora a bit later than me. Well, I say potential opponent. In this case, I do have an opponent, I just don't know who it is. Till I'm done with the run. Don't forget to check the chest. There you go. I needed to do a hook dash there in order to hop off the left slightly more efficiently. I need to remember to do this coming up. So this is the normal way how you get to a left side swamp. It's significantly slower than if you can use the other small key to go to the other side. I we do a hook dash here. Because this allows me to hop off the ledge immediately without having to awkwardly stand sideways. Because that's what you have to do in order to hop off the ledge quickly. If you use the quick hops. Quick hop is basically the concept of you pressing the A button, which is the button to dash, just in front of a ledge, which always drops you down immediately. So here, 
I get the correct alignment. I can actually hookshot to that pot in particular. Naturally, those are also should also have done a hook dash. I just forgot again. Um, if you get a proper alignment, you can clip one pixel further into the wall there and actually hook to that pot. It's very specific though. Still saves time. Especially if you get it quickly. Alrighty, we're gonna get all the items out of this dungeon. Well, maybe. Maybe we'll leave one item behind because this next one is just going to be the Samaria. Who knows? We're gonna get at least one more. Not here. Alright. Next chest could be the uh, last one. Well, it's the last one in the dungeon, but we'll see. <laughs> There's a shovel! Alright, sure. <laughs> sure! Why not? Might as well just check the shovel before we go anywhere else, right? Lost of loot flu from here at this point, afterwards? I don't know. Double! Got it. Double. Do we do Zora before Ice Palace? Uh, probably? Because let's imagine, in Ice Palace we find three items and there's only the boss left. Then we have the decision between pedestal and Zora. Pedestal would be good for me, ish. Not that great, but good, because most opponents are gonna have a similar case where they did not clear Easton either. Okay. I'm kind of sort of hoping it at least is in Ice Palace. But we'll see. That was a blue boomerang. Not what we're looking for. It's not even the right color. I like how the music just restarts whenever you warp over here. Okay, we save and quit from Zora every time. Uh, up Death Mountain, because that's gonna be the faster way. So, the only way you would have enough money for Zora is if you went up Death Mountain first, which is actually a very reasonable play to do in this scenario. So if Zora has in fact the item, I will probably be very likely a decent amount behind. Cape. I like it, but I know that the uh, Bumper Ledge has nothing, so... Ice Palace it is. Or Pedestal. Always Pedestal. Either way, I don't mind Ice Palace. I think Ice Palace is fine. Most people will probably check a lot of things before going into Ice Palace. And I think I checked everything reasonably efficient. Not the most efficient. Especially if you consider me not doing this left side spawn first, but... Uh, it's kind of reasonable to do that at this point. Plus, you would never go into Pendant Ice before... ...the front of... ...before finding flippers, which were in Mystery Mire, so Mystery Mire Double Dip is almost guaranteed for most runners. Unless, again, somebody feels really behind, because let's say they die to Aghanim and just feel like they need to make a play. If this would be quite a play, and I respect it. Just a bit unlikely for that to work out in the end. Because usually when you feel super far behind, chances are you're behind by maybe half a minute. And if you just keep playing the normal way, you would be perfectly fine to win in the end. Because... Unless you specifically die to a boss, or you know your routing has been really inefficient. The chances are always going to be pretty decent. That your opponent has taken a different route, which may or may not be significantly less or more efficient. That's just the nature of the game. Uh, 
So we're gonna do a little bomb jump here. What I do is I use a spin attack after walking off the ledge, which basically means that the spin attack that I release is going to put me precisely at the edge of the, well, pit that you could fall into. So I'm as close to the pit as possible, and then I just need to move one pixel down before placing the bomb, because that gives me plenty of time for that. And if I do that, I have two pixels of freedom where to stand after placing the bomb, so I don't have to worry as much about pixel precision exactly if I do the movement before. It costs a little bit more time for setup, but I do feel like it is worthwhile for me. Oh, that's a setup that I learned very early on. So maybe these days I would be perfectly fine to just ignore it. And just go for the pixel precision movement, because I have gotten better at this game. Since I originally learned all these tricks. So big key and... I'm so used to Icebreak here, I keep forgetting to pull that switch. That's like the third time recently. Oops. Especially with Volcano Samara, yeah. You don't want to go in here. Alright, we have a bunch of small keys. We did get the big key, I think. There's big key and ice team. Just first, and then we go the long way around to Ice Tea Room if that's not it. I could have gone Ice Tea first, which would be more efficient to check both of the chests. But I was kind of hoping to only check one chest and then be out of here, but that's not how it works right now, it looks like. On the bright side, we're not doing this entire thing with just a fight the sword. Have been a bit more awkward. I'd love to see this already way longer than I would like it to be, considering that I wanted to participate in the other race. So this is probably or potentially just a worst case scenario for that, because I think I'm gonna be able to get my 10 minute delay started in time before the race room closes at this rate. Unless the item's right here. <laughs> There's an item on the boss. So I did not even need to decide whether I would want to go to the boss or not. You always go to the boss in this scenario. It almost doesn't matter at this point whether these pedals slow not in terms of efficiency, because the map is going to look basically the same for most racers at this point. Well, I guess pedestal technically slightly benefits me more, in case someone decides to go into Ice Palace early or something. Which, again, is not entirely an unreasonable play. At some point. Kino Samaria, can we mirror before? Nope, we have to pick it up. Alright, we got the Kino Samaria. X. Again, not the worst. Because I do prioritize efficiency. But I check literally everything before, and somebody might just not quite check everything, everything before Ice Palace. Like, for example, they might not have done the awkward wraparound for the graveyard ledge. But, who knows? Maybe they did. I already have the big key for this dungeon, so we can just go left hand side in the main hub room in order to pass through there slightly more efficiently. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I decided to just go the other way around. I do not have a fairy anymore, but what I would want to maybe do... I do have a blue potion. I'd like to catch a fairy, but we're not gonna do it before... ...before spooky action is over. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take advantage of the weird way of how the fire rod works and effectively shoot a fire rod shot into one of the anti-fairies in the room on the left side of this room. Oops. And what this allows me to do is hopefully, magically, the crystal switch in the room above activates because that room is loaded and the crystal switch is loaded. You can just not normally shoot through the wall. But because the fire rod works in mysterious ways, where the impact point and the projectile are basically two separate things, and the impact point is, a, well, influenced by your height variable of the fire rod shot, which the fire rod shot never changes the height variable, it uses whatever was previously in that variable to begin with. In short, um... Basically, the bird that flew away, or the duck, I guess, when we landed at Misery Meyer, was in that height variable slot. So I picked up the rock from below uh, to enter the portal towards Misery Meyer, and that kind of gave the duck a specific height variable that offset the fire rod shot impact point by just enough to hit the crystal switch in the north room right there. There's two, uh, another fire rod shot uh, thing you can do. But uh, that's kind of the main saving thing, so to speak. Oh my goodness, these guys decide to be in the way today. Alrighty, anything else? Not really. We just need to clear to the rock at this point. And this has turned into an almost, oops, all dungeon seed. Because all dungeons is a different category where you need to clear all dungeons, but you don't need to do this. But in these ones here, it's always like, well, you probably don't have to clear the pendant dungeons. <laughs> so I will say that in terms of luck routing, whatever you want to call it, it's a straight 50-50 shot in terms of who is going to win this race, me or my opponent, in terms of stuff. I didn't get particularly lucky, my opponent could have, or they could have just chosen the same route. In that case, execution and efficiency will decide, probably. Alrighty, we go right hand side in this room here first. Because I was mirrored to the entrance anyways, in order to not use up too much magic. And consequently, going to the top left of this hub room... ...from the bottom left is faster than from the bottom right. So slide optimizations. There's the big key. And a small key. So we need a grand total of three small keys, from chests specifically, um, in order to clear, clear the dungeon here. And because we got the big key already, we don't have to worry about this one either. We already got it. There's another small key, that is two, so we just need one more. And the probability that they're specifically the last two small keys of this dungeon could be, in theory, is possible, in both in a big chest and the key that normally contains the big key of this dungeon in the lava pipe room. Both of these would need to contain a small key, 
in order for me to ever have to ever visit the big chest. Ooh, that's not good. Which again is possible, but the probability, I think somebody told me at some point, is like 2.5% or something. So it happens. But it's unlikely. Definitely gonna grab a fairy here. Probably did not need those arrows, but it's fine. Better have them than not have them. Spend two seconds doing that. Actually, less than two seconds, isn't it? Right. Got a fairy. Now I'm perfectly safe. Probably. And this guy. We not don't go to. How much boost? Thank you. Uh, we don't go into the lava room because we need a small key. But if we go to that lava room, we spend the small key. So it would be just kind of. Uh, net neutral at best, and we have literally all the tools we can possibly want in order to clear the rest of the seed. So here, again, it's still technically possible that both the lava room chest, as well as the big chest, at the same time have the last two small keys, at which point I would have to backtrack to them. I just kind of hope that doesn't happen. That's the short version. Um, did not do that right. But here's the last small key, so we don't even have to go to Laser Bridge. But we're fine. Don't have enough magic to do the fancy strategy. Probably. We'll probably not use the Red Boomerang just randomly. Because it can cause lag, or it does actually. It doesn't just can. By the way, I don't know whether I have enough money. Money? I don't know whether I have the magic for using Kinosamaria, so I decided to switch to a few threats instead. Slightly slower. But it would be even slower if I tried some Mario first and then had to frantically switch to a Boomerang after. Paul has wondered why the right hat seems to take one less uh, sword attack compared to the left hat. And I think it has to do with the fire rod shot actually dealing the impact point damage as well as the damage itself from the fire rod projectile. So it kind of hits the head twice, which accounts for one less swing with the tempered sword. That's my idea of it. I don't actually know whether that's accurate. But for a long time I did not even know that using the fire rod on the head repeatedly or the ice rod on the head repeatedly actually does damage. Because the first time you hit the fire rod or ice rod, it does not deal damage, it just freezes them in place, and then the projectiles deal damage afterwards. Alrighty, get us tower. <laughs> Almost lined up. Not a picky. Not picky. <laughs> no! <laughs> does that influence the timer for a finger magic? Oop, it does not. In case it does. 
I don't know whether the timer runs during the medallion animation for the torch. I haven't done that in a little while, but on the bright side, it's my favorite medallion animation. I really like how it looks. So, don't usually get to see that outside of opening up Midstream Meyer and the other dungeon. Sometimes you do. Unusual though. You know what? Keep the mirror. Just in case the torch has something that we need. Nope. Now we switch to the hammer. So, we would be faster to bonk into the room north, but I want to pick up the magic there. Okay. I took two hits and I'm still not lower on HP. Guess the bones just deal that little damage. Blue man. Oops. Both on left in this room, spam the boomerang button as soon as you start throwing it, entering the room. Um, hold down right. It usually works. Unless I'm not spamming the boomerang pretty well enough. You could also just time the boomerang, but... Better at mashing, usually. But not if I don't position my hand properly, that is. There's the big key in number 13, Fire Snake Room. Let's go. Switch to regular arrows instead of silver arrows in this room, because I want to hit the switch on the left. Oops. But... It would have caused more lag if I... Use silver arrows instead with the particle effects. I wonder whether silver arrows can be used for free clippers. I don't think about it. I would guess probably in some capacity. Although, if you have bows, I guess you don't need the arrow. Oh. Never mind. Do you have a fairy and a blue potion? Hey, Elizara. Welcome. Thank you for the good luck. Definitely need it. We have 18 arrows. That should be sufficient for most instances. Fairy. Ah! <laughs> well, good thing I have a fairy though. Always get my safeties. Because I would not have expected to get a hit there. Oops. Oh well, still have a blue potion. I'm just gonna want to use it sooner rather than later. I get hit too many times. No! <laughs> Needed to stand for the left. You escape once, but you can't escape twice. Arrows are in the top right. Slightly more than that. Now there's a narrow pot, I think, in the. Oh, thank you for the magic. I think there's an arrow pot in. The room before Moldam 2. Does that room have a name? Because I do not remember it right now. Oh my goodness. The monk in the Manmola's room, just to get the timing. Yes, that's basically all it does. Allows me to. 
more efficiently. Well, I, I say efficiently, but I'm not sure it's really that efficient. It allows me to get the timing more easily. The main downside is that uh, Silver Arrow flies for a fair bit longer, which does in fact mean... Why am I opening this? Come on, Yaga. <laughs> it's just forced of habit at this point. Um, the main downside is... That it lets the Silver Arrow fly for longer, which causes slightly more lag. It's not as efficient, but I think it's worth it for the consistency. Messed up. Oh well. It'd be really awkward, no. Maybe I need to practice that strategy again. Because I don't even know where I need to go in order to start dashing up. It's clearly I messed it up the last few times. I think that might be two. Could be one. Ooh, that was one. Ah, that was a zero. Not like people. At least that was a three. <laughs> so the first one was a two. skip out on that next race. We'll see. One. Two, three. Is this your house? Four, five, six, seven, nine, one, two, four, five, six, seven, ten, twelve. I have silver arrows so I don't need to be too concerned about magic. I do want to avoid using the blue potion if I can. So we also want to get rid of our bombs right here. Accidentally placed them too high up. Easier to get rid of them on the side without accidentally dropping down ourselves. Okay, come here. Not terrible. Okay, of the 30 total active races participating in this latter race, 10 have finished. Only 10? Everybody must have gotten a horrible seat. And done. And my opponent is... Not among them, actually. So... Yagamov has finished and beaten the Zelda Muse with a time of 1 hour, 42 minutes and 56 seconds. I've, I've seen the name Zelda Muse quite a bit around, so they are certainly not bad, but I guess I must have gotten lucky. I don't really know anything about them, to be fair. Alrighty, that worked out well. I want to try and set up and get started for the other race in the main tournament thing. Wait, is that today? Oh, it's tomorrow at 5 a.m. <laughs> I was concerned for nothing. Uh, I'm not gonna be here tomorrow at 5 a.m. And 8 p.m. is one as well. Mm. But tomorrow is like a monthly. Oh well, we got it. GG to the Zelda Muse. Thank you for playing. As usual, if you have any questions, any thoughts, any ideas, any concepts, even if it's just for fun. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening and for lurking. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I hope you enjoyed being around. And, well, have a good evening. Take care. Or a good morning, because it's 5 a.m. almost.